How you doing? This is Pastor Maxwell of Newbies Grove Baptist Church, and I wanted to invite you out to make sure you come worship with us. We do a lot of things for the community. We do the In Touch basketball program. We take care of the homeless. We teach leadership workshops. We teach real estate classes to make you ready to buy a home. We help you with building up your credit. We do a lot of different things here at Newbies Grove because our vision is to build kingdom-minded people to serve the community. Why don't you come in and check us out? We love you. Hope to see you here. We're going to be in a series, Faith That Overcomes the World. Faith that overcomes the world. You are not put here to go through trouble. You are not put here to be under the circumstances. I hate when people of God say I'm doing good in spite of the circumstances. I'm doing good even under the circumstances. Why are you under anything? You are more than an overcomer. God has given you a spirit of power and not a spirit of fear. He's given you a sound mind and not a spirit of timidness. God has blessed you immensely. And the only thing you need to do to unlock the keys of what God has given you is with your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But look at this. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of, of things not seen. It's the substance and the evidence. So whenever you have faith, that means it's real. Whenever God gives you an urge of something in your heart, that means it's real and it's already tangible. Your faith is the tangible substance. Your faith is the evidence. So as long as you have faith in it, it shall come to pass. All you're doing with your faith is pulling out a spirit realm and causing what's in the spirit to manifest down here in the natural realm. We're going to be at a four part series and God is going to show us how to walk in faith to empower ourselves and overcome the world. The word world comes from the Greek word cosmos, which comes from the word cosmetology, which means makeup, which means the way that the devil makes things look. A lot of times you need to understand those things that are unseen are far more real than the things that are seen. Those that are seen are temporal. So the circumstances he has you going through, the cancer that he makes you look like you're going through, the bad health that scare that you look like you're going through, it is because he throws things in your path to get you distracted away from the faith of God. Remember, Peter was walking on the water, but the minute he began to look at the waves, that's when he began to sink. Stop looking at the waves of life and continue to keep your mind and your eyes steadfast on Christ who strengthens you. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we're going to be in a four-part series. And I promise you, the power that you're going to be walking in when we begin to get deep into this series is going to be overwhelming and it's going to take you to a new level in life. Amen. We're going to be in a four-part series, Faith That Overcomes the World. I think we just put faith that overcomes. Oh, they put the world. Amen. Faith that overcomes the world. It says, the just shall live by faith. This phrase is listed verbatim on four separate occasions. This phrase is saying that those who are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ must walk by faith. It is amazing how many believers are not walking and living by faith. Yet it is understandable because walking by faith is not a natural thing to do. But we as Christians should walk by faith and not by sight. Once we enter into the door of Christianity, we are supposed to walk by faith. The problem is that many Christians walk in the door, and five years later, they're still standing by the door. They have not learned to walk by faith. You cannot walk by your intellect, your degrees, your career, your connections. You have to walk by faith. If you're going to overcome the world, you're going to have to do it by faith. If you do not learn how to walk by faith, once you enter into this kingdom, you are going to be a miserable saint. If you don't walk, <clears throat> if you don't intend to walk by faith, don't come in. Now, you'll burn in hell because that's the place you go. I'm just playing. Please come into the kingdom. But quite frankly, what I'm trying to tell you is you'll have hell on earth if you do not learn how to walk by faith as a Christian. You will be disappointed and disgusted because you will see people advancing all around you and you will wonder what they are doing that you are not doing. What they have done is learn to walk by faith. Anybody that is achieving anything in the kingdom of God is doing it by faith. 
Any preacher, any pastor, any church that is successful in the kingdom is doing it by faith. The way you bring things into manifestation in the kingdom of God is by faith. No matter what area it is, a faith works, whether it's finances, salvation for your kids, career, church growth, it must be done by faith. The book of Colossians teaches us that once we are baptized in faith, we are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and covered by the blood of Jesus. When you were in the kingdom of darkness, you operated on a different set of principles. The medium of exchange in that kingdom was money. You can have whatever you want in the kingdom of darkness if you have enough money. But in the kingdom of God, the medium of exchange is not money. It is faith. When we get saved, it is the equivalent of going to sleep in America and waking up in Japan. See, when you got saved, you were taken out of one nation you were snatched out of one and placed into another. It was the spirit realm. Your body stayed in the same place, but you were transported from one nation to another. If you don't know that you've been transported, you are in trouble. See, you can't wake up in Japan and try to spend dollars. You need some what? Some yen. The problem is, for some of us, we'll try to operate in the kingdom of God the same way we operated in the kingdom of darkness. We have to understand that we have awakened in another place. Yes, you were able to do better financially. Yes, you were able to do better financially before you got saved because you were operating under a different set of principles. The principle in that kingdom was taken, it shall be given to you. Stealing, you shall have. Beat the guy up in front of you and the door shall be open. That is the principle of the world. But over here, the principle is give and it shall be given unto you. In the kingdom, is, it is treat thy neighbor as thyself. The world, the principle is do you, you do unto your neighbor before he does unto you. Different kingdoms, different principles. If you're going to be successful in this kingdom, you have got to learn how to operate. Why do you have to walk by faith? When Adam sinned in the garden, he sold uh, the title uh, to our authority and lost our ability to see the other side of things. See, he lost our ability to see all of our needs met by the Father. He fell out of immediate, the immediate presence of God. He lost the ability to see as God sees. See, Eden means to be in the presence of God. They were in the presence of God. But when they sinned, they got put outside of the presence. But in order to bring us back in the right standing with God, to be able to see as God wants us to see, God began to send us prophets, priests, and judges, and finally he sent us Jesus. Jesus came to show us how we need to live a lifestyle of faith in order to please God. See, God has chosen you to be an overcomer. That which is born of God, it says, overcomes the world, and we will do it by what? Faith. We are supposed to be overcoming stuff all the time, overcoming sickness, overcoming disease, overcoming poverty, overcoming problems, overcoming doubt. If you're, a child of, if you're a child of God, you're supposed to be an overcomer. You're not supposed to be beat up. You should be overcoming all obstacles. You can't be an overcomer without obstacles. Therefore, expect resistance to constantly come your way. But by faith, you will overcome all the adversity. See, some of you need to change your confession and stop saying you're going through and start saying overcoming. See, God didn't call you to be a go-thrower. <laughs> he calls you to be an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm not supposed to get beat up by the situations, problems, and circumstances. I've been given the power to overcome all things that come against me. I need you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I'm not going through any longer. Because I'm an overcomer. Yeah, yeah. Some people, when you ask them how they're doing, they say, I'm doing good under the circumstances. Why are you under there? <laughs> You're under there because you have not learned to walk by faith. I need you to understand, I'm never under the circumstances, never, not ever. Why? Now I have the opportunity to crawl under there with everybody else, but I could get, I could get up under there and hide with the rest of y'all. When, when but when you're doing the work of God and the devil hates you, you better hide somewhere or learn how to walk by faith. That's where the Christian because you know once you come into the kingdom of light, the devil hates you, right? He didn't mess with you when you was on his team. Come on, somebody. 
at, at Shaq and Kobe. They was cool when they was on the same team, or we, we thought they were. Come on, somebody. The devil act like he on your team as long as you're in the kingdom of darkness because he already has your soul. But once you walk out of darkness and come into the marvelous light, he's going to throw more hell at you, and so you better learn how to hide or walk by faith. And I hope I ain't got no punks up in Newbie's Grove that say, I don't care what the devil throw at me. Turtleneck too hot to begin happy. It's like, it's like a leash. Turtleneck keep you calm down. I can't be like Nico. Nico too cool. He can wear a turtleneck and just be chilling. Look at it. I tried to be like Nico Clemens, but I can't handle it. Give me some scissors so I can cut this stuff now. In this kingdom, <laughs> you've got to start believing what your instructor is telling you. Being Jesus through his word. He says in verse 4, this is the victory. This is the victory, not when it happens. Faith is the victory before it happens. Not when the manifestation comes. Not when the disease leaves. Not when the money comes. Not when the rent is paid. This is the victory. My faith is the victory, not my manifestation. My faith is the victory. That is why I shout before the battle is over. That is why I'm healed even if I still feel pain. The fact that I believe I have victory, the fact that I'm not without God, God or hope, that is the victory. Once I believe it by faith, I've already attained it. Faith is the evidence and faith is the substance. Can I talk to some faith folk in here? Once I understand that faith is the victory, the devil can't touch me. Once you get your faith Lock on. Nothing can blindside you. you. You will know when you get it too. You, you will stop being up and down and up and down. One day it'll hit you and you will tell the devil, I got my faith locked. Once you know, he'll know it too. He, he'll know he can't mess with you because you got to understand the devil is a simile. Huh? A metaphor for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Because it says he come roaring at like a roaring lion. It didn't say he was a roaring lion. He said it come like a roaring lion. He, he'll fool you and make you think you bad. Come on, somebody. He'll roar and, and, and shout at you, but, but he really can't do that. And once your faith gets locked, you will understand that he ain't nothing but a slippery serpent, and he may bruise your heel, but you're going to step on his head. He said, you said, tread on, y'all don't hear me. You have to, you got to fight to get it though. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. But let's get into some terms so you can understand fully what I'm talking about. Now normally I don't go into the Greek and stuff to let you know I'm smart and all that stuff. And I hate when people use it for no reason, but I need you to listen to these words. You might want some pen and paper. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Let's look at the word world now to find it to you before. The word world comes from the Greek word cosmos, where we get cosmetology from. The word literally means arrangements, decorations, or props. The word faith uh, comes from the Greek word pistis. It means conviction or persuasion. What the scripture is telling us is that, the, it, that this is the victory that overcomes the decorations, the arrangements, and the props. You see, I don't know what I'm saying. See, the devil can make it look like Something wrong. Yeah, 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 just follow me. It, it, it might not be a shout service this time, but I got to teach you something. Our conviction and persuasion. See, once you get persuaded about something, you can overcome the prop that is in front of your face. What you have to understand is that the things of this world are temporal. The Bible says that Satan is the God, the little G God of this world. He is the God of the decorations, the arrangement, and the props. He rules the props temporarily because Adam gave away the title deed in the garden. Satan has been given temporary lordship over the world, or as we discovered, the decorations, the arrangement, and the props. And the props, follow me now. The real wealth, it's a dead spot like right here. So whoever we paid to put this in need to fix this because it costs way too much. For it to be going out right here. I know it ain't you, but anytime I'm moving to a certain place, you know, we got that by faith and money. The real wealth is the earth. When God lays claim to his wealth, he doesn't claim 
the world trade center. He doesn't claim dollars, yen, pounds. He says the silver and gold is mine and the cattle on the thousand hills. Currency is man-made and worth different amounts around the world. They are arrangements, decorations, and props. No matter where you go, silver and gold have the same standard of worth no matter where you are. See, Satan can have temporal man-made systems for a while, but God doesn't give the earth to Satan. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Satan only has temporary lordship of the decorations, the arrangements, and the props. Y'all, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. We have, we have plays here at Newbies Grove. We understand props, right? Props will make you think you're in a real house. Props will make you think you're looking at a real family. But no one really is living in it because it's props. When it is time for a different scene, the set is rearranged. And, we, and when the show is over, we move the set off the stage. This is what Satan does in your life. He arranges the props. He gives us uh, some sad news or a sad set of circumstances, but you need to realize none of that stuff is real. The only thing that's real is your faith. Those circumstances, those arrangements, those decorations and props that he puts in your life are designed to attack and destroy your faith. Get the principle. You can sit on the couch on the place stage set, but you can't live there. It looks real, but it's not. If you really want to live and walk with God, you have got to learn how to step over the obstacle props that Satan puts in your way. See, those things that are seen are temporal. Those things that are unseen are eternal. You can only overcome those temporal props by depending on your eternal unseen faith or your conviction and persuasion in God. Eternal things will move props. Sickness is a prop. Let your faith move it. Poverty is a prop. Let your faith move it. Divorce is a prop. Let your faith move it. Disease is a prop. Let your faith move it. And you must use your faith to overcome all of them. The way that we overcome the props is by faith. Oh, you follow me now. The Bible goes together line upon line and precept upon precept. Remember, they overcame uh, in 1 John 5. Let's go to Revelation 12, 11. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Mm. This must mean that the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony must be components of our faith. You cannot operate in the faith until you come in relationship with the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus. You have to be saved. Unsaved folk don't understand this because it says the foolishness of preaching. It, it sounds foolish, but God uses the foolishness of man to confine the wise. See, you understand? So you have to be washed with the blood of the Lamb. You have to be born again in order to be taken out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of God. The blood of Jesus is, is what rescues you from the kingdom of darkness. You have no chance in this world without the blood of Jesus on your side. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is not their testimony that freed them. It is the word that caused them to overcome. See, yeah, 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 yeah. Follow me. See, we think our testimony is what we say after something has come to pass. What he's saying is that if you didn't have a word of testimony before you got through, you didn't get through. See, 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 we think it is after we get over that we testify. Oh, see, I'm, I'm trying to slow down. And we sing how I got over. My soul looks back and I wonder how I got over. Well, if your soul looks back and wonders how you got over, you lucky you got through. If you're singing that, it is simply mercy that got you through. I wouldn't even sing that song. See, I don't sing stuff like that. I know y'all sing it every now and then. I'm in my office, la, 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 la. Because you letting the devil know, I don't know how I made it through. So if you attack me again, I won't know again. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Some stuff just theologically don't make sense to me. 
Because I don't never wonder how I got over. I know it's because the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. I ain't never got to wonder how I got over. I may, oh, come on, somebody. It may shock me every now and then, but I know that it's the grace and blood of Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Remember again, the Bible goes together line upon line and precept upon precept. Look at Revelation 19.10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am the fellow uh, servant and thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I'm trying to go slow. God made me put the turtleneck on to slow me down. Remember their faith is what causes them to overcome in Revelations 12 along with the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And Revelation 19 tells us that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You can go back and say that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And our faith is made up of the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So our faith is comprised of the testimony of Jesus and the spirit of prophecy. See, if my faith is comprised of my faith in Jesus and me believing that his blood saved me and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, I need to know what the spirit of prophecy is. Because according to the word that goes together line upon line and precept upon precept, I won't be able to overcome the world unless I understand what the spirit of prophecy means. See, we need to look at the word spirit and prophecy. I'm not talking about getting up before the Lord and saying, thus says the Lord. You know how they get in front of the church? No, the spirit of prophecy. The word spirit comes from the Greek word pneuma. Which means we get the word, well, we get the word pneumonia, uh, uh, which is a respiratory problem, which is a problem in breathing. The word literally means breath or current or wind. Figuratively, it means vital principles or disposition. The essence of the thing is the vital principles, right? The spirit is the vital part of man. A man has to have a spirit to have vitality or life. It means vital principles or disposition. So if you don't have a, to be absent from the body, to be present with God because that means your spirit separated from your body, right? You ain't nobody if you ain't got a spirit and a body. If you just got a spirit, deuces. We'll see you in the next life, all right? Like faith without works is dead. You got to have two parts, all right? Prophecy is the Greek word. Propheteo, it literally, it literally means scripturally foretelling or speaking under inspiration. Remember, the word of God or the scriptures are totally inspired by God, which means when I speak the word of God, I'm coming under his inspiration. This is why you must find scriptures that line up with your situation that you're dealing with and speak it into the atmosphere. That is how you overcome your circumstances. Because every word in the Bible is inspired by God or inspired by God. His spirit is in the word. Basically, God has breathed his life in all of his scripture. This means that the testimony of Jesus is the vital principle or disposition of scriptural foretelling. In order to get myself into this mental faith disposition, I have to believe in the testimony of Jesus Christ. Get the CD. I know you lost. I've got to remember that I'm bought, just keep walking with me, with the blood of Jesus, and I'm going to be scripturally foretelling what is going to happen in my life. Because I'm bought by the blood, the devil has no right to me. He cannot defeat nor destroy me. Because I'm bought with the blood, I have been taken out of Satan's kingdom and placed in the kingdom of God. If we're going to walk by faith, you got to get in the habit of scripturally foretelling what is going to happen in your life. I did not say fortune telling. I didn't say, go get the lady with the little crystal ball. I said, scripturally foretelling. I said, scripturally foretell on the basis of scripture, say what is going to happen before it happens. God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his... 
See, see, the problem is you keep trying to put your word on it. God said his word will not return to him, boy. He didn't say nothing about your word. You keep trying to take your earrings off and put your Vaseline on it. You keep trying to loosen your tie and get ready to fight with your own mouth. You better learn how to scrutinize for a tail and say, oh, Lord. It's better to cast yourself in the sea and tie ink around your neck than to mess with me, baby. Because God said nobody, no weapon. If you're going to walk by faith and overcome the world or the props, you've got to get into the mental disposition. The mental disposition really means the habit of quoting scriptures and letting the devil and everybody around you know what's going to happen in your life based on the word of God. When people said, come on somebody, when people said <laughs> that we weren't going to get this building, even some folk that's in here today, I walked around this building and said, he who said, he who began a good work in you shall finish it. It ain't my job to finish it. God, you told me we were going to have three buildings and your word said, your word shall not return unto you void and you going to finish this work. It ain't my job it's your job so I need you to work it out you got to find scripture and stop listening to people Ooh. Oh, got to walk by faith some of us have been saved for years <laughs> but still operate on a kindergarten level because we've not learned to live by the word of God. Oh, we can quote verses. We know more verses by rote memory than the pastor. We walk around here like Denzel Washington in the book of Eli. But are you living by it? Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus, <clears throat> looking unto Jesus and finisher of our faith. Remember, the scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. See, which means you can read this saying the word is the author and finisher of your faith. Because what? In the beginning was what? And the word was? And the word who? And the word eventually came and dwelt among us and walked in the flesh, right? Which means the word is Jesus, Right? Which means the more you read the word, the more relationship you have with who? Jesus. Because the pneuma or the breath of God is on what? The scriptures. And so you need to make sure you have a relationship with your Bible because that builds a relationship with your what? Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know how back in the day, you, you know, we, we lost some of our our little, our purity when it comes to the little love stuff. Cause you know, pe people are keep some of y'all still got love letters from y'all ex. Come on, somebody. Yeah, some of y'all still got somebody else and still got them letters. I'm messing up somebody's life right now. It was so nice. Oh, remember when you wrote this to me 20 years ago? Yeah, I'm married, girl. Leave me alone. <laughs> Why? Because it helps build relationship. Because that's a part of your heart that you wrote on that paper. And we read these old love letters from Negroes and Negro ets that did us wrong. But we don't read the ultimate love letter of the Bible. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Anyway, I'm going to get into that later. So in order to have faith, you got to know the word. You can't have faith without the word because you got to scripturally foretell where you're going. And how can you scripturally foretell if you ain't in your word? <laughs> See, this is what I want to say. And, and when I be having church conferences, people say, no, Pastor, have you prayed? I want to say, have you read your word? Because your prayer don't mean nothing if you ain't read your word. Some folk pray all the time, but they picked up the Bible one time that week. And they think they're praying under the inspiration of God, but they're really praying under the inspiration of their emotions and their feelings. Faith is not a feeling. Faith is an evidence and substance. Faith is a thing. Faith, y'all don't hear me. 
See, people wonder why I, I don't, I, I'm not an emotional person. I might get emotional and hype when I'm preaching, but, but I'm not an emotional person. Why? I'm a person of faith. Like right now, I don't even, I, 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 now I'm starting to get to the point now I'm like, okay, I think we done got over this little hump thing. We had to walk by faith. Now I start getting on Miss, uh, Miss Spelsner. Okay, I want to see what the books look like now, but I, I ain't want to look at them when we first got in here because I knew they ain't look good. Why well, am I going to mess up my faith? I don't want to see that. Let me read the Bible. Lord, you said if you told me to do it, you're going to take care of it. So I get back to that practical stuff a little later. I'm going to let them handle all that. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? So anyway, and so then in Romans 10, 17, it says, so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We can't rebuke. See, see, you got to get into the habit of scripturally foretelling so you can rebuke some stuff that's in your life that's getting on your nerve. But we don't read our Bible. See, we wait every week to hear Maxwell or somebody else, which means we only have about 52 days of victory instead of 365. You should hear the word every day. Because no matter where you go, there you are. Faith comes by what? Hearing is the present tense word. It didn't say having heard. Help me, English teachers. Hearing is action. Hearing is present tense. Hearing is going on right now. Which means, he said, it comes by hearing the word of God. You got to constantly hear it. You can't hear the word today and make it through the whole week without really. Why you need to at least get CDs, DVDs, or, or, or read your Bible especially. Do something. At least read a verse. At least read a psalm. At least read a proverb. They short. Do something. Put some type of word in you. See, Gatorade will tell you, if it's in you, you are right. Now, if you catch a cramp, then drink Gatorade. Don't call us and try to get your money back. You can't cramp up, then drink the Gatorade. No, they say, is it in you? And when they show the sweat, if they drinking the lemonade, they be sweating out the lemonade Gatorade. They drinking orange. You see the little orange Gatorade because they're trying to say, if you put it in your system, you will be all right. God said, if you put the word in your system, you will be all right. If you can just get the word in you. I know I'm long today, but I'm going to get out of here. Everywhere you go, there you are. The power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. When you are broke and no money is in the bank, you still need to say, my God has supplied all of my needs according to the riches and glory. You have to speak what it is that you want. Some of you say, I don't want to speak about that I got money when I don't have money because I don't have it. I want, I'd be embarrassed. Well, honey, if you don't say it, and your bills aren't paid, you're going to be very embarrassed. You better learn how to speak those things that be not as though they were. You better learn how to put scripture on it and say, his, 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 He shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath the lender and not the borrower. He'll bless me in the valley and the field, my coming and my going. He'll give me a good measure, blessing, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Oh, you better watch out and start putting the scripture on it. No, I ain't broke. I'm rich because my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I got money. Why? Because my God has supplied it all. Let me say this. How you're living right now is a direct result of what you've been speaking in your life. You need to learn how to guard your mouth. James says that the tongue is a world of fire. I'm trying. He also gives us a solution to our tongue. He says a horse is a massive animal, but if you put a bit in its mouth, you can control where it goes. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, if you just put a bit of the word in your mouth, <laughs> instead of a bit of your mind, your life will be far better than it is. 
You got to have the word in you. What are you saying? Is it in you? When you go into frustration, what's going to come out of you? Flim, flar, flar, and filth or the word of God? Come on, somebody. What's going to come out of your mouth when you're going through hell and high water? Will the scripture come out or are you going to cut somebody out? What's in you will come up out of you. And you got to start eating that word and start chewing that word and get hungry for that word. Because when you go through, you'll be able to say, no matter what hell I go through, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Have I done all I can do? If I can just stand. See, boxers, at the end of the fight, they'll stop the fight. Because you think they knocked out. I mean, you think they can keep going. But they've learned. They've trained. They get to know stand like this. Jump like this. Land like this. So when they hit and they wibbling and wobbling, they've been so trained that even when they knocked out, they can still be on their feet. And you got mad because the reverie waved it off. But let me talk to you right now. If you just stand by faith and not worry about the devil, you might be knocked out. Jesus will step in and say, no weapon formed against my child shall prosper. She shall be blessed in the valley and blessed in the field. Hey! Speak life instead of death. Speak life. It's sad, it's sad that so many Christians speak more death than life. You wonder why you keep getting in messed up relationships and people keep cheating on you because you keep speaking it. And if you speak it, God say, apparently it's what you want. A man or woman's belly is satisfied by the fruit of his or her lips. Whatever you speak, that must be what you want. I'm so broke. You must want to be broke. You keep saying it. Y'all remember, y'all remember what's his name? Who that saying that? The dude that always barking. Arf, arf. DMX, y'all gonna make me lose my mind. He lost it. Have you seen him lately? <laughs> y'all gonna make me lose my mind up in here. He showed up, did it. He got what he spoke. Told you after Tupac got shot the second, second time, I stopped listening. Must be something in his lyrics. He keeps talking about he gonna die early, and he ha it happened. Bigger than learn his lesson. Right after Tupac dropped this album and, and talked about how somebody was gonna kill him early, he came back and made an album called Death. Died that same year. Be careful of what you speak. Because whatever you speak, that's what you're gonna get. Stop speaking it if you don't want it. Speak what you want. Speak what you want. And stop speaking what you don't want. Oh, my child going to drive me crazy. Keep on. <laughs> Your child going to do whatever you speak. Speak it. Now, can I talk to some parents? I'm going to end with this one. I know it ain't got nothing to do with this sermon. Faith without works is dead. You can speak all you want, but stop sparing that rod. Faith without works is dead. Just a little parenting tip for you. 101 from the principal. But faith is the evidence. Faith is the substance. Once you believe that you have obtained it, it's already there. You feel me? Once you have obtained it in your faith, once you possess it by faith, 
even if it's not manifested down here, it's already yours. Because faith is the evidence. And faith is the substance. The only way to overcome the world, the decoration, the props, this little G, God system of the devil, you have to walk by faith. Faith supersedes anything natural. Our weapons are not carnal, but are spiritual for the casting out of strongholds and vain imaginations. Everything that exalted itself against the armors of the living God. Because you find spiritual wickedness in high places. But you got to understand, the spirit of God is far more powerful than the spirit of the devil. But the devil has more power than you if you operating. You ever watch them Marvel movies and some, some of them don't want to use their powers? He's like, how stupid are you? You got these powers, they fighting you. You better use them. You need to look in the mirror sometimes and say, you know what, you stupid. You know what, I'm stupid. I ain't using all the power. God gave me all this power in the form of the Holy Ghost. And all I got to do is walk by faith and not by sight. But I'm fussing at Marvel. I'm fussing at DC Comics. I'm fussing at people that don't want to use their powers in a movie because they're supposed to be saving the world. You're supposed to be saving people in the world from these wicked systems. You're supposed to be helping snatch people out of darkness and bringing them into the marvelous light. In your own personal movie, are you using your power to save who needs to be saved? Yes, only Jesus can save, but you're supposed to plant the seed and he waters it. Have you walked under the power of the Holy Ghost and done something by faith? And you know why God allows you to do stuff by faith? So he can show people how powerful his spirit is. You know how I many pastors come to me now asking me about how to get this and how to get that? I mean, I can tell them some real estate stuff, but they ain't had nothing to do with real estate, some of it. It was faith. It was faith. Faith unlocks the keys to where God wants you to go. Now, some of you all have been listening to this sermon, and you don't know Jesus. So it's almost like, not even trying to be funny, but it's almost like the peanuts, Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. You will never understand what I'm saying when we begin to go a little deeper in the word. Some folk in here don't know what I was talking about. Tried to break it down as simple as I could. But you have to have a relationship with Jesus. You know, you know how you don't want to ask the teacher a question because you don't want to like you don't know and you wait to the end. Oh, yeah, I need to ask you something like you forgot. You just don't want to ask nobody in front of nobody. That's how disciples used to do. They used to sit back and then, and then nobody know the answer. Jesus would be getting mad. Then they'd be like, hey, man, uh, Jesus, what you meant by that parable? And he'll tell them because he had a relationship with them. You would not be able to understand the Bible and unlock the keys to certain scripture that God is trying to talk to you if you don't have a relationship with him. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten that wants to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Is that one? Hello, I'm Pastor Willard Maxwell of New Beach Grove, and I just wanted to let you know, I believe that God is speaking directly to us through this ministry. And I believe that there may be some messages that you've missed that are life changing for you and you need to take the time to order. Or maybe there's some message that you heard that you know a friend or, or a coworker or a family member, even an enemy's life may be changed. And let me tell you this, in the Bible it says, don't stack up treasures here on earth that the moth will eat or the water will wash away. It says stack up your treasures in heaven where they, eat, where they will last for eternity. John says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. What I'm telling you is this. The way you stack up your crown and build your mansions in heaven is when you give a life-changing word to someone or share salvation. You don't have to be the one bringing the word. You can just buy the word and send it to someone and you're stacking up treasures in heaven. I'm believing that you're going to make the right decision and you're going to get this series or get a CD or get a DVD for somebody it's going to be life changing and instead of building up treasures here on earth you're going to take the time to build up the treasures in eternity where you will live with your father forever be blessed